we have Jennifer Lang. She's a spokesperson for autobytel.com, which is celebrating 20 years uh, yeah. online. And uh, so I think it, I thought it was worth uh, talking to you and like know about more about, about, about autobytel. How are you, Jennifer? I am fine, Javier. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time because I know you guys were busy, uh, very busy at the NADA conference, like the National, Autom what is it, Automotive Dealers Association, right, in San Francisco? That is correct, yes, National Automobile Dealers Association. Which in Spanish and sounds like, you know what means in Spanish, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, but anyway. Yeah, nada. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Um, it's the it's the nation's largest uh, conference. It's an annual conference. It kind of moves around from city to city each year, and automobile dealers from all over the country congregate and they attend workshops and they learn about new products and services that are out there on the horizon for them to offer to their consumers. So it's a big show and it's and it's an exciting event for them. And uh, yep, we just got back. So it's not a public event, right? It's not. It's not. It's, it's more for like the industry insiders. That's right. It's an industry. Yes, it's a trade show. That's exactly right. So tell us about Autobytel because from what I understand, it was like the first website with all information about new and old cars, and it's 20 years. I mean, like when we talk yeah. about when we talk about, for example, the newspaper industry or the print right. industry, I mean, or TV, whatever, we're talking about 50, 60, 100 years, and that's the whole story of, of, the, of the industry, but online, we're 20 years, and that's the whole story of everything online, so you started it when there was nothing, really. Right, we were the world's first automotive website, essentially, you know, we pioneered automotive internet, and um, we launched in 1995, and Here's a little piece of trivia. The reason it is called Auto Vitel is because the original founder, Pete Ellis, he was a former uh, car dealer in Southern California, and he's a great marketer. He had commercials on TV, really exciting, fun guy. And he came up with this idea to sell cars on QVC to the phone. Oh, QVC, wow. Yes, and that is the reason why our name is Auto Vitel, because that was the original concept. And then he heard about the Internet, so then it became auto by telecommunications, and and that's sort of how we got our start. Initially, we were in a very small office in Corona Del Mar, California. There were a handful of people working for the company, and that's how it got started. And since then, we've had 20 years of, of excellence and innovation in the automotive industry and in the online automotive space. It's been an, an exciting ride. Yeah. So what kind of services and information can uh, the audience find in autobytel.com? At autobytel.com, people can essentially find all they need to know about buying and owning a vehicle. So they can compare new cars, they can find out what their uh, used car is worth, they can read reviews, they can watch test drives and video reviews of vehicles, and um, most importantly, they can submit a lead or a, what we call a purchase request to, to buy a vehicle of their choice, and that lead is then sent to uh, one of our dealer partners or a host of our dealer partners and then they can essentially purchase the vehicle at the dealership. So pretty much everything you need online to shop for, research, buy and own a car. Yeah, so for some people, I, I read a, a report a few months or actually a couple of years ago that when someone is searching online for a new car, they visit up to 18 websites and that's like so overwhelming and even like confusing I would say. So uh, what... You know, What's the difference, or what's the the, the the advice that you will give audience the audience to like do a good research online for to buy a new car? I would say to consumers, you know, information is power, and there are a lot of sources out there. You know, really dig deep into it. Um, if you have your mind set on a specific segment of vehicles, let's say, for example, um, you know, you have a family, and you you know, you're interested in a in a let's say maybe a larger vehicle, one that can accommodate your, your kids and, and your gear, you know, really sort of dig deep into that segment of vehicles, read the reviews, um, look at what the experts are saying out there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you've got all of these sources of information and you really should use them uh, to your advantage. Yeah. Um, would you add to that, uh, because I get uh, the question a lot, like, what should I buy and all that? And for me, it's really easy to spend other people's money, right? So, <laughs> and the problem is, I, I think, I find out that people want to listen what they already have in their mind. So if somebody is looking for an, uh, 
an SUV, let's say, crossover, whatever, and they, they already have like the Chevy Traverse in their heads, and you tell them buy a Kia or look for a Kia, they don't, they almost dismiss your advice. So, I mean, have an open mind too, I guess, right? Yes. And one thing too, you know, um, we, we have uh, training programs that we've put together for, for dealers. Um, and sort of, we've, you know, we've been doing this for a really long time. And I think, you know, dealers ask questions to their customers. And I think it's a good idea to ask yourself those same questions. You know, who's going to be driving the vehicle primarily? Right? What is it going to be used for? You got to look at that. Yeah. And then what? You know, who, whoever the primary driver is for that vehicle, what are the features you find most important to you? Do you have to have a, a good lumbar system because you have a bad back and you're going to be driving that vehicle um, for work? Right? Or do you need a vehicle that's versatile? You, you want to be able to to tow something behind it? Do you need something that is efficient because you do do a lot of traveling and, and you know, you're, you're environmentally conscious? So I think those three key questions are very important to ask yourself. Yeah, and then obviously the budget. I mean, uh, I mean, what's the, the, uh, the most uh, appropriate uh, allowance of money that you should spend in a car? I, I once heard a formula, like 10% of your income, that's the most you should, like, invest and consider not only the car payment but the insurance and the maintenance and the gas and all that right that's, and you know what it, it falls around that's about the average range and what i would say too is, is don't forget you know there are actually um you know information out there that will tell you what the the, the ownership costs of that vehicle are so the fuel so what, what's it going to cost to insure it um you know what what what's it going to cost to maintain it you have to look at all of those elements too because think about it you're going to own that vehicle it's the second largest purchase next to a house yeah. you're going to own it for for a number of years so you've got to look at not only what can you afford in terms of a monthly payment but all of the other costs that go into that so be sure to take all of that into consideration too yeah we're talking to jennifer lunch she's a spokesperson with autobytel.com which is celebrating 20 years of existence and jennifer we have like a minute and a half unfortunately on this segment but uh, uh the the service for that auto by tell pro provides online is like great but are we gonna ever gonna get to like a really a point where we're gonna buy the actual car online i will tell you this you know dealers are today a lot of the dealers um in our network of dealers are con you know they're consultative they're they're consultants right and they are product specialists And when you walk into that dealership, they know their brand and their, their, their models of vehicles better than anybody else. And so, you know, really, and, and quite frankly, dealers contribute significantly to local economies. You know, look around and you'll see how they contribute to local sports teams, yeah. the local tax. So, you know, right? So you, I, I truly and, and firmly believe that they are at the absolute best people to to communicate with, to interact with, to transact with, in order to, to purchase a vehicle. And, and quite honestly, dealers are here to stay. And today's dealers are consultative. They know um, that consumers expect a high level, they have a high level of expectation when it comes to the car buying process. And so, you know, I, a lot of our dealers meet those expectations, so. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. And if that happens, I mean, if you ever get to the point where we're going to buy the car online, I mean, I'm sure Auto Vital is going to be there to provide that service too. So thank you very much for your time, uh, Jennifer. And I hope to have you on the show again uh, sometime soon, like not on the 40th anniversary, but sooner than that. Okay. Thank you, Javi. I really appreciate being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.